Totally legit scroller box incoming. I've been waiting for it and here it is. Okay, so my April scroller box still isn't here yet. I got my notification that the May box has shipped a week ago and normally my monthly scroller box video has already happened by now, but it's held up somewhere along the line in the mail system. Don't know where? Scroller box doesn't offer tracking. So today we're doing a rather unique episode of No Box Art Box, since I'll actually be doing the real box eventually as well, so technically I'm replicating a box I actually got, which does mean rule exceptions apply, but I haven't actually received the box yet. I'm doing the replicated version first. Hello and welcome back to Jenna Gets Creative. The No Box Art Box is a simple and very fun art challenge that lets you experience a subscription box without actually getting it. There are many reasons why you might want to do this challenge. Maybe you can't afford the box you want to try out, or you want to try the box before you commit. Maybe you've seen an older box that you really wish you got and it's not available for back order. Maybe your box is lost in the mail. <laughs> Whatever the reason, use this challenge as the next best thing. Step number one, pick any past art or craft subscription box, pick a specific past month, and look up what was sent in that particular box. Sometimes you can get the actual contents listing from the company itself, and other times you'll have to look up videos and blog posts from other people who actually received it. Step number two, match the supplies as close as possible using only items you already own. Exact matches are fine unless you're replicating a box you actually got. If that's the case, try not to use exact matches. Try to match it with an equivalent item. Step number three, do the challenge. Make art or a craft using only the supplies you've matched, and if the original box had a prompt or theme, try to stick to it. Only add missing essentials such as paper, a pencil, or an eraser. If you do this challenge and you decide to share on social media, use the hashtag NoBoxArtBox, all one word, so I can see it, and feel free to specifically message me or drop a link in the comments to make sure I don't miss your NoBoxArtBox YouTube videos. I do curate a master playlist for this challenge and I'd love to add your videos to it. So yes, this round I'm doing the April 2020 scroller box, and I'm not allowed to use any of the exact items if I have them, because I'm actually getting this box. I'm also going to be looser with the box's prompt than I normally would be, because I want to be true to the prompt when I do it for real. The prompt for this box is Daydreamer, and the theme seems to be watercolor media that aren't watercolor paints. I'll talk about what's supposed to be in the box, what I matched it with, what the recommended retail pricing, scroller box will have used to determine the box value is, all of that, and then at the end I'll say a little bit about the piece I've created. I'll put clips from my fake unboxing at the beginning up in the corner when I start talking about what I'm using for your reference. I'll have all the prices discussed, as well as my usual real-world pricing and subscription cost versus savings researching in the description box down below, and I'll have all prices listed in US dollars, Canadian dollars, and pounds sterling. One quick note I want to make before we get too far in, the first bit of red that shows up on this piece was accidental. I laid the wet brush down on exactly the wrong part of my blotting paper towel and picked up a mark that I made when I swatched the colors. I had already restarted this piece once, so I just went with it. I know it makes the piece grittier and darker than it was looking. No one said it had to be a pleasant daydream. The items Scrawlerbox sent out in their April 2020 box are three Albrecht Durer Magnus watercolor pencils from Faber-Castell, two Albrecht Durer watercolor markers from Faber-Castell, a number six round paintbrush, an HB pencil, and an eight sheet A5 pad of cold press watercolor paper. This is also the first box to feature their new zine, with expanded information on the included items, the featured artists, and a selection of the previous month's prompt participants. I'm really looking forward to actually getting my box and seeing that zine for myself. For the paper, the original box sent a Scrawlerbox branded pad of 300 GSM cold press watercolor paper, eight sheets in size A5, and as far as I know, we don't know who's producing that paper for them. I'd be willing to bet it's St. Cuthbert's Mill, since they've included so many different papers produced by that overhead company throughout the years, but it's also obviously not the highest quality paper made. They claim these eight sheets are worth a cumulative retail price of £2.99, which is Canson and Dale Rowney price range. It's not going to be Bockingford Botanical or anything. To replace this, I'm using a sheet of 300 GSM rag cotton cold press watercolor paper from B Paper Company. Like I said, this was take two shooting this challenge. The first time around, I did take the extra minute to trim my sheet down to A5 dimensions, and the swatches I flashed at the beginning are on the strip I trimmed off, but for round two, I decided not to take the paper trimmer back out. 
The included brush is the Pro Art Polar Nylon Watercolor Brush in a number six round. I can only find these sold in sets on British retailers, but doing the math, it looks like in terms of RRP, this brush is worth £2.18. In its place, I'm using my number six round by Milan, which I got in a previous scroller box. The Albrecht Durer Magnus watercolor pencils included in this box are a larger diameter version of the normal sized Albrecht Durer range. They don't currently offer the full color range in the larger size, though the formula, color matching, and light fastness all appears to still be exactly the same. Everyone got walnut brown, deep scarlet red, and emerald green. RRP is £2.99 per pencil, which works out to £8.97. They are slightly cheaper than RRP open stock at Jackson's, and they're cheaper in sets every Everywhere, but the American and Canadian retailers I checked don't seem to offer a discount from RRP on open stock. I'm replacing these with the exact color matches in my standard size Albrecht Durer watercolor pencils. You can purchase these in sets as large as 120. It is exactly the same color range as Polychromos, but I only have the 36 tin, so I'm pleasantly surprised that I have all three of the exact colors. If you didn't, you're looking for a dark warm to neutral brown, a dark red, and a mid-tone green. The Albrecht Durer watercolor markers are watercolor ink in double-ended fine and brush nibbed markers, similar to Winsor Newton's watercolor markers, but without the chisel nib. Once again, they replicate the same color range as the regular Albrecht Durer pencils and the Polychromos range, and they have light fastness ratings on the barrel. Unlike the Magnus pencils, these do seem to be offered at a discount from RRP open stock at every retailer I checked. RRP is £4.99 per marker, or £9.98 for the pair, and everyone got Thalo Blue and Cadmium Yellow. I'm very much excited to receive this box and get the real markers, as I've been very curious about this product since it hit the market last year, but I don't own any yet. I'll be using my Karen Brush Marker Pro watercolor markers instead, and I've selected the colors Cyan and Gold. I matched them against swatches of Thalo Blue and Cadmium Yellow in my pencils, and these are very close. Finally, the included pencil is a Derwent Graphic Pencil in HB. This is Derwent's basic artist's graphite pencil line. RRP open stock is £2.20, though you'll find it cheaper everywhere, and Curry's in Canada actually has them on sale right now for just $1 Canadian each. I do have a few Derwent Graphic Pencils, but I'm trying to avoid exact matches, and none of mine are HB anyway, so I've matched this with another previous Scholar Box offering, the Viking Pencil in HB. I decided to go for a very sketchy, loose Dalmatian sitting in a field of color, and I wanted to let splatters of color imply the majority of its spots. I ended up putting a few in more deliberately, but only after the initial splattering so I could see what needed emphasis. I do wish I hadn't accidentally put red into the background, as I only intended to use red on the collar, and I was originally going for a pleasant daydream feel. But in this very unique case, not only do I have a perfectly reasonable excuse to show you another video drawing from the same prompt very soon, I have to do the same prompt in colors again when the real box shows up. It doesn't matter that this piece didn't turn out the way I planned, because I get another chance. Don't forget to use the hashtag NoBoxArtBox, all one word, if you're trying this challenge out for yourself. You don't have to do this exact box if you don't want to do any box. I'd love to see what you do with this challenge. If you're into books and writing videos, I've recently launched a second channel called The Westvale Archives, and I'm uploading booky and writerly content over there every Saturday and some Mondays. I'd love it if you would go check that out if that sounds like something you're interested in. You do get to see my face in every video too, and not just the odd time I actually feel like doing a skit intro here. If you're looking for more to watch, I've also got some suggestions up on the left side of the screen now. Why not watch that Delphi portrait I did earlier this week, or check out my other Nobox Artbox videos. I upload art content twice a week at minimum, every Tuesday and Thursday, and if you like living life creatively, whatever that means to you, I'd love to have you along for the ride. Bye guys!